Okay, so if we're gonna create a camera move with a handheld feeling, I like to use this handheld feeling in a lot of my work because it uh, just brings a bit of humanity, a bit, um, bit of realism back into things uh, and uh, just kind of, you know, gives it a bit, of a, a bit of a cinematic touch. So the first thing to do, I like to do with these sort of uh, camera moves is create a dummy and create a dummy around the, the focal point of uh, what we're gonna look at. So in this case, we're obviously looking at the log here. Um, so I'm gonna create a dummy just right in the middle of the, 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 the action here. And essentially, um, I'm gonna just zero this out, right? So if you, if you right click on your uh, transform uh, button at the top there, or you, you have it also on the bottom left, I'm just gonna zero out all these things. So make sure it's exactly at zero and X, Y, and Z. Uh, this is just good practice for anyone who um, uh, likes to keep their scenes clean, but I like to keep everything as much as I can uh, in, in zero, zero, zero. So I'm gonna go up here and um, you can see the perspective view that we're in isn't far off uh, kind of where we wanna go, right? We might wanna be a bit tighter, might wanna be a bit around here, just moving that log into position. And uh, what I want to do from here was kind of, you know, get an idea. I'm swinging around, kind of getting an idea of the camera move, what we can do with it. I'm going to go to create at the top here. I'm going to go camera and create standard camera from view. So this is going to give us a camera right from our perspective view. As you can see here, um, it's, it actually already has an interest. It comes down with a, a target. Um, so you can see on the... Uh, on our on our uh, outliner there, we've got camera one, camera one target. So what I'm going to go do is um, go into the camera settings. So if you click the camera and go into the properties panel over here on the right, um, you're going to see all your your camera rollout. Um, it's going to it's going to default with whatever that lens was from your perspective view, and you've got to type a camera. So I'm going to set that to a free camera. Um, that's going to remove the target, so you can kind of rotate it anywhere, orientate it anywhere. Um, we're going to change the lensing here too to something that's a bit more realistic. Um, so like a 55 mil lens might be the type of thing you might go and shoot this thing within the forest. So I'm just going to realign um, the camera here uh, with the 55 to make it compositionally a little, a little cleaner. And then I'm going to uh, select the dummy here. Um, so our dummy is going to become the sort of master of the camera. So renaming it master rotation here. Uh, it's going to take, it, we're going to rotate around this point. So the thing to do then is to then go up to, um, to your uh, parenting and uh, essentially parent this camera to the dummy. So the way to do that is I've got just these two things in the scene. I'm going to click this chain icon, uh, chain them together. And as you can see, as we rotate the camera now, as we rotate that dummy now, the camera is going to inherit the rotation around that dummy's pivot point. So bringing up the curve editor here, um, this, is, this, is, this is a very simple move. Obviously it's a two point move. I'm gonna make that linear, make those keyframes linear. So as we play through, that's gonna feel like it doesn't start and stop really gradually, but it more like we're just straight into the action uh, like you would get in uh, you know, a, a movie or, or a TV commercial or something like that. And um, so if I go up to the trajectories here, I can actually turn on the motion path of the camera and you'll be able to see the camera as it orbits around. Um, you'll be able to see like a tracing. You can see it in the, in the orthographic view there. Uh, it kind of traces the motion there and you can see uh, the trajectory of the camera where it's going. So to get a bit of a handheld action on it, um, a little trick that we use in here uh, is uh, these positions and position lists and rotation lists and uh, there's all these types of effects uh, within, within this uh, uh, motion rollout that you can you can assign. So selecting the, the rotation of the cube here, um, I'm going to assign a controller to, I'm going to assign a rotation list and uh, that's going to give me essentially a free channel here that says available. So you've got, you can, you can constrain it to your XYZ, but I'm going to constrain it to the available. I'm going to click noise rotation. And what that's going to do is going to put a noise frequency on the rotation of that cube. So as you can see, it starts going absolutely crazy. Um, and that's not what we want at all. Uh, we just want, we want a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to take that strength right down, change that frequency uh, to be a lot more gradual, even 0.05.
it's adding just that little bit of kind of uncertainty that you wouldn't be able to get from keyframes. Even if I take it down 0 0.01 here, you can see that it just gives a little bit of a lot, uh, keep alive, just a little bit of motion um, that really sells it uh, overall. So uh, these are really handy techniques to use um, just to get that extra little bit of, of realism uh, into your scene. So you can see here that's changed the actual trajectory of the camera. It, it, it matches very well to that curve there. Um, that trajectory curve you can see feels really like the uh, characteristic graph from the noise controller. Next thing we want to do is this feels this feels like it we could just kind of reorientate the camera a little bit. But that move in general is feeling pretty good. So what I'm going to do, you can see it from all views here, it looks pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is just move the camera around a bit and um, I'm going to actually or I'm just going to animate the uh, the cube itself in in Z here, um, Z up in max. So you can see that we just kind of gradually come up. So it's got a little bit of a mix of that mechanical boom and it's also got a little bit of that handheld motion. So just to make that linear, I'm going to pop into the curve editor here. Uh, bring up my Z position. You can see it's it's Bezier by default, and I'm just going to hit the uh, the straighten at tangents there. So you can see it's got that very mechanical boom um, with a little bit of handheld rotation on it, which is just giving us a little bit of realism. You can also apply this rotation to the camera. Um, uh, you can jump back in here and uh, you know zero all these things out or or change the strength in any particular direction if you want it to be really wobbly in one axis or the other where you want it to bounce up and down. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of a uh, little bit more emphasis in one direction.